When Stars Are Scattered, Chapter 8. Walking to school the next day, I could tell Jerry had been thinking about what his dad had said too. It's like overnight, we suddenly became grown-ups and had to decide our futures right now. I hear some people sneak off to Nairobi and find jobs there. Maybe that's what I'll do. Isn't that illegal? We can't work in Nairobi because we're not Kenyan. So we can't work here either. What's the difference? My brothers are interpreters. They have jobs. Yeah, right. Some job. It's just like being a teacher. It's not a real job. Refugees aren't allowed to have real jobs. So we work for scraps. We sell firework or firewood or unload carts in the market for scraps. We live off scraps until we die. I know... I like to be left alone when I'm in one of those moods, so I just kept my mouth shut. Hey guys, wait up. You're never gonna believe it. Remember Abdi Karim? That kid we used to play soccer with? Yeah, what about him? He's getting resettled to America, come on. Everyone's at his tent. A big crowd had gathered by the time we got to Abdi Karim's tent. It's just our first interview with the UN. There's no telling if we'll actually go. Congratulations, how wonderful. I wouldn't want to go to America. No morals there. Oh, you're just jealous. You know you'd go in a heartbeat if you could. Did you hear we're going to America? When are you going? How did you find out? You're going to be rich. Ugh, what's the point of hanging around here? We've got to go or we'll be late for school. What's the point? Are you crazy? He's going to America. Maybe we'll find out how he did it. You're wasting your time dreaming about it. Don't you know the chances of getting resettled are about a million to one? Well, Omar, are you coming or are you staying? Well, maybe we can learn how he did it. You're wasting your time, all of you. Will you get a big house? Of course he'll get a big house. Everyone in America has a big house and a fancy car. Where are you going? New York or California? So how did your dad do it? How did your family get picked? I, I don't know. Our name was just on the list. The list. Everyone in Dadaab knows about the list. Every week, the UN posts a list of people to come in to interview for resettlement. Everyone says the way to get on the list is to say your life is in danger, like you're from a minority clan or religion, or your life was threatened back in Somalia. I guess being an orphan and Hassan's disabilities aren't enough of a danger because it's been nine years and our names have have never been on the list. Jerry and I stayed and talked with the other boys about America and what it would be like to live there. Before we knew it, hey, it's getting dark. We missed the whole day of school. We'd better get home. America, yeah. I, I thought your dad paid some money to get your case heard. Yeah, and you see how well that worked. Now he's just broke. And he doesn't even work at the market anymore. He just sits around with his friends chewing cot. I hope my dad hasn't heard about Abdi Karim's family getting resettled. He'll be really angry. Do you want to sleep over? No, I'd better go back home. My mom and my brothers and sisters are there. I'll see you tomorrow. I didn't talk much that evening. I only had one thing on my mind all night, America. I never really thought about going to America before. Not for real, it seemed impossible. The chances were a million to one, but now someone I knew was going. Abdi Karim had found a way out of this prison we were all stuck in. I didn't know much about America. Some people said that life there is not easy, that people look down on refugees. But surely life in America had to be better than this. I knew you could at least go to school in America. You could get a job. Maybe in America we could be safe. We could have a home. All these thoughts and more settle on me like a heavy weight. 
I bet some other kid in America is asleep right now in their clean, soft, comfortable bed while I'm sleeping in the dirt. Why does Abdi Karim get to leave and I have to stay here? Why do some kids have everything and I have nothing? It's not fair. Of course, thinking like this doesn't do you any good. Somalis even have for a, word, a, a word for it, boofies. It means the intense longing to be resettled. It's almost like your mind is already living somewhere else while your body is stuck in a refugee camp. It's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair. It drives some people insane. I keep thinking about the UN's magic resettlement list. You can't apply to get on the list, they just decide. Still, some people start to camp out by the UN offices, begging workers to hear their case. Some people try to pay bribes, like Jerry's dad, even after they're denied. Some people keep trying. I heard about one guy, his case was rejected by the UN and he couldn't handle it. He killed himself. All of a sudden, I am so jealous and I wanna leave this place so badly, I feel like I'm gonna explode. It's funny how without saying a word, Hassan is the one person in the world who can make me feel a little better. Thanks. That's the end of chapter eight, and we will pick up with chapter nine next time.